Before we start comparing the lenses, the Siri 24mm f2.8 lens I got is for micro four third cameras and I'm filming everything with either the GH5 or the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Let's get straight to the point. We're going to compare the new Siri 24mm f2.8 anamorphic lens with the closest spherical lens I can find, which is the Mikey 25mm T2.2 cine lens for micro four third cameras. First, and the most obvious difference, which is the field of view. That is how much you can fit in the frame with these lenses. With the Mikey 25mm on a micro four third camera, you will be getting around 50mm full frame equivalent viewing angle. Here's how it looks like. Since the Siri 24mm f2.8 is an anamorphic lens with a horizontal squeeze of about 1.33 times, that means the horizontal view of view is going to be 24mm divided by 1.33, which is equivalent to about 18mm horizontally. That means it is a 24mm vertical and an 18mm horizontal lens, if that makes sense. Here's how it looks like. If you convert the Siri 24mm to a full frame equivalent viewing angle, you will be getting around 48mm vertically, which is pretty similar to a spherical lens, and you will be getting around 36mm horizontally, and that is much wider than a spherical lens. If you compare it to an 18mm normal spherical lens, they should have very similar viewing angle horizontally, and the anamorphic image should be shorter with two black bars at the top and the bottom. That is because of a 1.33 times squeeze factor. When you desqueeze or stretch the anamorphic footage back to normal, you will be getting a 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio compared to 16 by 9 with a spherical lens. If you put two black bars on the normal spherical lens footage, it will look pretty similar to the anamorphic footage. So if you think something looks cinematic just because of the two black bars, which there's nothing wrong with that, you can probably just get a cheaper spherical lens and add the two black bars and you will have similar results. If you think you can do the reverse by cropping into an anamorphic video to make it look like a 16x9, I would highly recommend you not to do it. Not only because you are filming with a more expensive anamorphic lens, but you are also zooming in into the footage when cropping, and that will degrade the quality of the image. But the first thing you will need to remember if you want to achieve a 2.4 by 1 aspect ratio with a normal lens is to remember how much the top and bottom part of the video will be chopped off at the end. Some cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K or the 6K has a function called save area to show you which part of the video will be chopped off while you're filming. Some monitors have similar functions too, even my $100 budget monitor has it. If you don't have that function on your camera or monitor, you will probably be very surprised when you add the two black bars when you are editing the video. So get something that will show you the safe area if you want to film with 2.4 by 1 aspect ratio with a spherical lens. With an anamorphic lens, you will be forced to film at 2.4 by 1. What you see on your camera display should be what you get as the final footage. You just need to squeeze it later. When it comes to composition for 2.4 by 1, an anamorphic lens definitely has an advantage because you can only see everything in 2.4 by 1. The wider horizontal viewing angle brings us to a very good reason when to film with the Siri 24mm anamorphic lens. For example, when you need to film a lot of people or things horizontally and you don't want anything from the top and bottom to distract the audience. Having black bars at the top and bottom actually helps the audience to focus in the middle. One real life example I have is filming dance video using a spherical lens compared to using an anamorphic lens. Usually dancers are in a group and when I want to fit a lot of people in the frame, the size of each person will be very small with a lot of dead space at the top and bottom when using a spherical lens. Using an anamorphic lens will get rid of the top and the bottom space and make the entire dance more immersive. But keep in mind not every dance video or music video should be filmed with anamorphic lenses. For example, if the theme of the video is bright, colorful, and cheerful, let's say it is a summer theme video, using a spherical lens will make the audience feel the joy and freedom by showing more things in the frame. 
instead of keeping them in a tight aspect ratio. At the end of the day, it is a creative choice, so give them a try and you will find your own style. The second major difference between an anamorphic lens and a spherical lens is the lens flare. I would say most of the modern lenses are trying very hard to control or even avoid lens flare because they usually make your image look washed out and they are pretty hard to predict as well. On the other hand, anamorphic lenses embrace lens flare so much that they are almost everywhere whenever there is a bright light source shining into the lens. To me personally, I love these horizontal lens flare, especially when filming dance or music videos. They're like organic special effects that you don't need to add in post. The lens flare on the Siri 24mm is very strong if you have a bright light source like a spotlight. It will wash out your image, so try not to be too excited with the lens flare. You will feel the pain when you are color grading the footage because you will be looking at a video with a couple of seconds of high contrast image and then a couple of seconds of washed out image. Trust me, it's not that fun. That brings us to the point of being color neutral or color accurate. I found that anamorphic lenses usually have a pretty strong color shift due to the colorful lens flare that they are trying to produce compared to the mostly color neutral image from a spherical lens. I would highly recommend using a color checker, especially when you are filming with anamorphic lenses. As I said in my previous video, even the 24mm and the 50mm anamorphic lenses from the same brand, which is Siri, have different color tint. The 24mm is much warmer compared to the 50mm, which looks relatively blue. The conclusion is, if you want more color neutral images, try to use spherical lenses instead of anamorphic lenses. Another major difference between anamorphic and spherical lenses is the shape of the bokeh that they produce. Because of the squeezed oval shape aperture in an anamorphic lens, the bokeh balls are more oval compared to the round bokeh balls you get with a spherical lens. But keep in mind that because we're using a 24mm anamorphic lens, which is pretty wide, the bokeh balls are usually very tiny and short and not as oval shaped compared to an anamorphic lens with longer focal length. With spherical lenses, you can even achieve a lot of different bokeh ball shapes by using different lenses like vintage lenses. Personally, I don't pay too much attention at the bokeh balls, but if that's your style, now you know the difference. When it comes to sharpness, traditional anamorphic lenses usually are not that sharp, especially when wide open. But the Siri 24mm f2.8 is definitely sharp enough even at f2.8. As I said before, I would rather have a sharper lens to begin with because I can always make the image softer by using something like a ProMist filter, but I can't really make a soft lens sharper. Talking about image quality, the minimum focus distance is usually pretty bad with anamorphic lenses <laughs> compared to spherical lenses, and that is just the nature of the design. So if you want to focus on something closer, either use a spherical lens or use a diopter in front of the anamorphic lens. The last major difference between an anamorphic lens and a spherical lens is usually the price. <laughs> Anamorphic lenses, even when we're talking about the budget ones from Siri, they are usually more expensive compared to the spherical lenses with similar quality. I can literally get two spherical lenses from Mikey, let's say a 25mm and a 16mm, at less than the cost of one 24mm anamorphic lens from Siri. That's it. Those are the major differences between anamorphic and spherical lenses based on my own experience. If you are just starting out, I would suggest you to start with spherical lenses because they are much more flexible when it comes to compositions, color accuracy, and lens flare control. Get the anamorphic lenses when you are more comfortable filming because it will require a lot more control of the environment to create the image you want. Let us know which lens you use for different situations in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.